Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Saturday edition of The Squeeze. I am Tyler Conium. Saturday is here. There's a lot to do. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can quickly see we've got three bets on three different sports, and the dog days of winter are officially over. We've got MLS is back. Toronto FC plays tonight. Very excited about that. We've got a big card. A lot to talk about, so I want to get right down into it. Last night, we had a one and two day. Kind of a bummer day. The Leafs, we had them in regulation. They won a minute and a half into overtime. They won 2-1, to one, so that was a bummer. We had the Florida Panthers in regulation. They lost to Buffalo. We did have the Atlanta Hawks, minus 1.5 or plus 100. They smoked the Cleveland Cavaliers. That game was not even close. And then uh, if you follow my personal plays on Twitter, at Tyler Conium, where I post my personal plays throughout the day, I had a four-leg parlay for a plus 567 parlay. We had the Knicks on the money line, hit. Leafs and Wild under 6.5, hit. Golden State Warriors by 5.5, hit. All of them hit easily. Then we had the LA Clippers, who scored 175 points in dub into double overtime, lost by one to the Sacramento Kings. So we had them at minus 3.5, score 175 points, and we lose our parlay on that leg, which is fine. That wasn't part of the squeeze. That was just a side bit there. But officially, 1-2, and two, down 1.4 units. So if I know February, we were up 16 units, or January up 16 units, whereas in February, we're basically hovering around 500. So that's kind of the way it goes when you have three bets a day and, you know, 25 to 30 bets every single week. And I think our grand total, we're, we're well over 100 bets already on the year. So it is what it is. So let's get into the Saturday slate, shall we? We're going to start with the NBA. going to start with what I know best, which is the Toronto Raptors. They are on the road taking on the pathetic Detroit Pistons. Toronto coming into this 29 and 31. They are only 10 and 18 on the road. Pistons are brutal. 15 and 45. They're 8 and 21 on the road. Raptors have been really good, especially since the acquisition of Jakob Pertle. They've won three straight games. They've won six of their last seven. They've won seven of their last ten. And they're going for it. They have a squad that has vastly underachieved in the first half of the season. They added a center, which is what they desperately needed. And now they're playing really well. Pirtle's played really well. Most of the guys are back from injuries. Van Fleet will miss today's game out for personal reasons. I believe his wife is having their second child. But I think Pirtle comes into play here as well because Nerlens Noel is out and Jalen Duran is out as well. Those are the, the Detroit Pistons' two main centers. I don't know who's going to be able to stop Siakam, who's going to be able to stop Pirtle. This is a 12 p.m. tip-off, by the way, too, so you want to get this bet, bet in relatively early, a 12 p.m. tip-off in Detroit. Detroit's brutal, man. They've lost eight of their last 10 basketball games. They are 0-4-2 ATS uh, in their last six games following a road trip. They're 2-9-1 ATS in their last 12 games following an ATS win. Um... Raptors haven't played well in the last eight meetings against Detroit, but they're five and one in their last six Saturday games. And again, they've won seven of their last 10 games. They're rolling. I don't know who's going to be able to stop the download presence of Toronto. Who know we, who knew we'd be saying that when we started this season, but give me the Toronto Raptors minus six and a half minus 110 at FanDuel. Moving on to TFC. It is the opener of the MLS season. So you can catch this game on TSN. There's going to be a lot of stuff on Apple TV this year. It's going to be interesting to see how that goes. I was going back and forth with this one a lot. Do I want to take, do I, TFC is the underdog here, okay? And I don't want to make a homer pick just because and just throw money away. TFC or a draw was like minus 200, so I didn't necessarily like that either. So we've settled on a total. We're going to go over 2.75. That's minus 118 at bet365. So for those of you who are not familiar with what's called Asian betting, when you get into quarter over under totals, so 2.75 means it's going to be split into two bets. We've got one unit on the game, well, 1.18 units, but they're going to split that in half. Half of that will go to over two and a half. The other half will go to over three. Okay, so if three goals are scored, if if two or less goals are scored, we lose. If three goals are scored, we win half. And if four goals are scored, we win both. I know it can be a little bit complicated. If you're not familiar, I recommend just quickly looking up what Asian uh, betting is on spreads and stuff in soccer because it is it makes it a lot more fun. You sort of have... It's one bet, but it's two bets. It's kind of fun, okay? So over 2.75, which means we're looking for four goals, which would be ideal here. Um, results of these teams lately. So uh, when you look at Toronto FC, the preseason, they Toronto FC is supposed to be much better this year. They were terrible last year. They've improved their roster quite a bit. They've got a new goaltender, which is you know MLS Cup winning uh, United States goalkeeper Sean Johnson, which should be interesting. But the preseason... 
was interesting. They lost 3 nothing. They lost 2-1. to one. They had a 2-2 draw, and they lost 2-1. to one. So you'll notice in those games, 3 goals, 3 goals, 4 goals, 3 goals, right? And they haven't actually won in their last overall 10 matches. Results between these two teams, there were 4 goals, 3 goals, 4 goals, 8 goals, 4, 4, 6, and 2. Both teams are scoring, which means I like the over. When you look at uh, DC United, it's sort of similar as well. Their preseason totals, they lost 3-2. They won 2-1. They lost 2-1. They've allowed at least one goal in 28 of their 30, in their last 34 games. I think both of these teams are going to score a goal. I think we're looking at probably a 2-1 final, which means we'll win half the bet. But we might see a 3-1. to one. It's the first game of the season. I think the teams are going to be fired up. I think Toronto's going to look to score more goals this year with their much talked about offense. And they have improved on the back end a little bit. But I still think we're going to see a lot of goals. That's the trend for these two teams, whether it was last season, whether it was preseason, we're seeing goals. So let's hope for a 3-1 TFC win. That would hit us with both bets, but even three goals will get us halfway there. So TFC and DC United to go over 2.7. That is for... Uh, minus 118 at bet 365 and then our last bet we move into ufc fight night here i've got a parlay a money line parlay in the co-main event taking uh andre munez and nikita krilov to just win their fights it doesn't matter how i was looking at do i want to take tko don't take submissions or looking at rounds i'm just want these two fighters to win Andre Munez comes into this, the number 11 ranked middleweight, and he's on a nine-fight winning streak. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu specialist. He's got elite grappling, grappling ability. Does have some holes in his striking that might get him in a little bit of trouble, but he does have a southpaw stance, which always sort of uh, confuses fighters a little bit. Brendan Allen, who's on the flip side of that, he's won three fights in a row as well. He's coming off submission win against Christoph Jocko that actually earned him performance of the night. And Allen's striking ability is improved. But he does have experience against southpaws like Munez. But while Allen has improved his striking, he doesn't have the power to really threaten Munez on his feet, I don't think. He does not have a great takedown defense. I think that could be the key. Um, whereas Munez is relentless on the takedowns. He's very good because of the jiu-jitsu with the takedowns and the submissions. There's going to be a smaller octagon here at the apex tonight. So I think that Munez is going to be able to get him down. I think he's going to be able to get him on the ground. I think he probably submits him. That is the favorite outcome of this. Um, but either way, I think he either knocks him out, I think he submits him, or he wins on the points. I don't know how Allen can win this fight. So I'm going to take the first leg of the parlay, which is Andre Munez on the money line. And then we're going to move to the main event. Nikita Krolov is the number six ranked light heavyweight contender. He's coming off back-to-back victories against Alexander Gustafsson. That was a first-round knockout. Unanimous decision against Volkan Ozdemir. Um, he's got a background in karate. He's a very solid striker who really likes to work in the kicks. But his best work, much like Muniz, also comes on the ground. He's got 15 career wins by submission. On the flip side, you've got Span. He's long, athletic. He's not a bad fighter uh, in his own right, certainly at all. Um, and both of these fighters have looked good in their recent bouts, but both of them have, there's a lot of holes in both of these fighters' games. So Krilov has been taking a lot of hits. He's been taking a lot of strikes, which you could say is good for his durability, but it also means he can get caught real quick, right? And Span does have some pretty deadly power, but I think Span is actually coming into this with more holes in his game, with more issues that he's got. He's very hittable, and his chin seems to have been weaker based on his past. Um, and also, he hasn't been nearly as good on the ground with the grappling. I think that's really where Krilov could turn this fight around. Uh, and I think Span has a tendency. He wants to end fights early, right? Most of his fights end in the first round. This is a five-round fight. This is going to tend to go a little bit longer. The over-under is set to one and a half. I do leave towards the over on that as well. The longer this fight goes, the more this is going to play into Krilov's advantage. He's got better cardio. He's got better ground game. Span could go all out in the first round trying to get that knockout. If this doesn't end in the first round, I'd be shocked if Span could win this fight. Shocked. And because of that, I think Nikita Krilov gets the win there. So we're going to take the Munez Kirloff money line parlay gets you to plus 129 at DraftKings. And that is your Saturday card. Let's run that back. I like the Toronto Raptors minus six and a half. That's minus 110 at FanDuel. I like Toronto FC and DC United to go over 2.75. That's minus 118 at Bet365. And in the UFC, I like Andre Munez and Nikita Krilov on a money line parlay, plus 129 at DraftKings. Feel free to drop a comment if you're fading or following. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Tyler Connie and for my personal plays throughout the day. TikTok and Instagram for just the picks portions and audio versions available on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. This is a hell of a day of sports. It gets started in like three hours. Let's just have a fun day.